So now that we've got that refresher out of the way, we're going to start jumping into the real meat of the algebra. So the first thing we want to talk about is evaluating algebraic expressions. Not equations, just expressions. So there's a difference between the two, and eventually we'll learn about that. So all of algebra involves the use of equations to solve problems. They're constructed from algebraic expressions. So expressions are inside of equations. And again, we'll learn the difference between the two. So, a couple examples. Arithmetic expressions are those first few examples. They just consist of numbers, fractions, no variables involved. But then the algebraic expressions, now we introduced variables. I have an x, a y, a over b. Now we have numbers with variables. So we have some unknowns. That's what variables means. So a letter can be dynamic. A variable can be dynamic. It takes on different numeric values at different times. We call those letters variables. We've already talked about it a little bit. But variables are dynamic. Their values change with respect to time, with respect to position. It just kind of depends on the context of the problem. Okay. When a letter stands for just one number, it's unchanging, it's constant, we call it constants. Makes sense. So an example, your date of birth versus your age. So one of them is a constant, one of them is a variable. So the constant is your date of birth. It doesn't change. You were born at a specific day at a specific time. That's not going to change. But your age, my age right now, is different than right now. I've just gained another, I don't know, 20 seconds. So it's always changing. It's constantly dynamic. So your date of birth is constant and your age is a variable. All right, so we have to know the difference between those two. We'll use this terminology, these two terms, a lot. Variables and constants. So get used to hearing those and knowing the difference between the two. So where do equations come from? We're going to do an example. In the following figure that you have in front of you, students' ice cream preferences were surveyed and recorded. How many more students liked chocolate ice cream better than vanilla? So naturally, you just kind of want to jump in and do this attraction and figure it out. But we want to be able to construct an algebraic kind of equation or expression in order to solve for this result. So what are we asking? The chocolate students like ice cream, chocolate ice cream, more than the vanilla. So the vanilla plus some little amount is going to give me the number of chocolate students. And we can obviously see more students like chocolate than vanilla. So I'm thinking, let's say, Choco students are the vanilla, however many of not like vanilla, Plus, a little bit more, a few other students. How much more? And oftentimes, when we're writing out or building algebraic equations, we just kind of have to parse the sentence into what are we discussing? How many more students like chocolate better than vanilla? So we can see. And being able to read the graph, how many students like chocolate? So look in, I've got seven of those. So we can fill in the constants that we know. Another constant is the vanilla, number of vanilla students. Three of them like vanilla. And how many more students like chocolate better than vanilla? This is our unknown, this is our variable. So I'm gonna call it x. So we're solving that equation for x. Solving that equation for x. And does it fit your connotation for how you wanted to solve it in the first place? 
without writing an expression, I am adding 3 to x. So to get rid of it, I have to subtract from both sides. So 7 minus 3 is equal to x. So I know that x is equal to 4. And again, whenever we're solving applied problems, we always want to put some units on our variable at the end to tell us what are we working with. So in this case, this was number of students. All right. So let's jump into the difference between equations and expressions. Because we have a few expressions here, but we also have an equal sign, which means we're talking about an equation that we were required to solve for something in the end. But there is a difference between the two still. So equations versus expressions, some of the triggers. So expressions and equations. What's the difference? What are the different trigger words, excuse me, that we can pick up on? So an expression only ever requires us to simplify something. Simplify. Write it in nicer form. Basically is all that we're asked to do. Simplify it. Okay, there's no equal sign involved. No equals involved. Because if we're not asked to solve for anything, we shouldn't have an equal sign. We're just simplifying something that's given to us. But an equation we are asked to solve. Like this was an example of an equation. But this piece, 3 plus x, is an expression. Okay. So in this case, equations we are asked to solve for something. And whenever we're asked to solve, we're going to see an equal sign within that equation. We'll always have an equal sign. So you have to be able to tell, when am I being asked to solve for something, and when am I just being asked to simplify something? You need to know the difference between the two. That's vital to algebra. All right, so one for you to try. Using that same figure, that graph on the first page, write an algebraic equation to discover how many more students liked cherry ice cream better than pecan. Or if you say pecan, pecan sounds funny. All right, so give it a shot. Write an equation. Don't just do it in your head. So how did you set it up? So my cherry is going to consist of the number of pecan students. <coughs> Excuse me. Plus a little bit more that I don't know about. So we, again, we can plug in the information that we know. Seven students like cherry. Three students like pecan. And the difference between them, I don't know what it is yet. But very similar to what we saw before. How many students... What are we talking about? Four of them. So, four more students liked cherry ice cream than pecan. All right. So, again, expressions are found inside of an equation. We need to know the difference between those. All right. So, when substituting in real values for a variable, and carrying out those operations. So if I was going to take 4, since I know it's the answer to this equation, if I'm going to plug it back in for x, we are evaluating the expression. Or checking to make sure that our equation is actually true, seeing if that answer holds. So, in that next example, we're given an expression, x plus y. There's no equal signs. We're not asked to solve for anything. So, we want to evaluate x plus y when x is 37, y is 29. So, we just plug those in. Wherever I see an x in my expression, I'm plugging in 37. And wherever I see a y, I'm plugging in 29. So, when we evaluate that expression at those two different values, we get out... 66. So we can have expressions with mixed variables. We don't have to stick just to one. And we can evaluate them. We can plug in real numbers, constants, 
in for those dynamic variables. All right, so algebraic expressions involving multiplication can be written in a few different ways. For example, 6 times a could be written as 6 xa, 6 times a, that's one way. What are some others that you're pretty used to seeing? 6 dot a, that also means 6 times a. Or we could even put parentheses around there. 6 times a or 6 times a. Or when we're only dealing explicitly with multiplication, we can just write the numbers close to each other if I have a variable. So if it was two numbers like 6 times 2, I don't want to write it using this form because what does it look like? 62. We need to tell the difference between them. So if I have a variable and a constant involved, we can write it just close to each other. That implies multiplication. So be careful with those different notations. Stick to one that you're comfortable with and then kind of get into the groove of using that so you don't make any mistakes. All right, so evaluate 3y when y is 14. We need to get out of there. So we're simplifying that expression or evaluating that expression. We're not asked to solve for anything. So wherever I see a y in my expression, I'm plugging in 14. So since we both have constants here now, I need to indicate that I have multiplication going on right there. We can't just write them really close to each other. So 3 times 14, we get out 42. All right. So a little bit more complicated now. The area of a rectangle is given by the formula what? Area is length times width. Okay, and we want to find the area when the length is 24.5 inches and the width is 16. So what am I trying to solve for? I'm given my L piece of information. The length is 24.5. The width is 16, so I'm solving for A. So that's my variable that I don't have information about. But I know that L, the length, is 24.5 inches, and the width is 16. So as we multiply those, what are we looking at? Constant-wise, the number on the front, we have 392 when we multiply those together. And I have inches times inches. So when we're talking about the area of something, if you're trying to figure out like the square footage in your house, if you're going to carpet, um, what kind of units are you talking about? Square feet or square inches if it's really small. But we have unit square whenever we're talking about area. So, square inches. Okay, because one dimension is just like a line. It would be one unit, two dimensions, two units. So if I'm finding the surface area, volume would be three, but we're never going to deal with that case in this class. But it exists, and we need to know what kind of units we're working with. All right, so one for you. Evaluate 10p over q when p is 40 and q is 25. So I'm multiplying 10 times my constant p. Its value is 40. So again, we have to explicitly say I have multiplication going on. And I am dividing by q is 25. So I'm looking at 400, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, multiplication, then the division. So what are we looking at? Coming out of there, 16. Good. All right. Couple more. Unicycling to work has become increasingly more popular at Great Falls College with its employee incentives. That would be hilarious to see us all unicycling. The cost to rent a unicycle is about $1.50 per 30 minutes. If I unicycle seven miles to work, the time t in hours that it takes to unicycle is given by that equation, since we have an equal sign in there, t equals 7 over r, where r is the speed. How fast am I going? We want to find the time for me to commute to work if I ride at a speed of 5 miles per hour. So time is t. My distance is 7. It's not changing because I live 7 miles away from the school. But how fast I'm traveling to work 
that can change. Some days I might go slower than others. <laughs> or I can't unicycle at all, so I'm laying face down in the snow. But we want to plug in. What information do we know? Which variable are we solving for? So we want to find the time. T is our unknown when my rate, when I ride at a speed of five miles per hour. So let's plug it in. I'm evaluating with R at five miles per hour. And my distance, its units, was miles. So, just dividing the constants together, I'm looking at 1.4. And my variables, excuse me, my units that are involved, I have miles divided by a fraction, miles per hour. So when I have division, it's really like multiplication by what? The reciprocal of the bottom, so hour over miles. So T is what I'm evaluating for. So in the end, I should be left with a unit that makes sense for time. So same thing divided by the same thing is one, it's gone, miles divided by miles. So I'm left with 1.4 hours. Does that make sense for time? Yeah, it's a good unit. All right, so find the time it takes to unicycle 22 miles. So if that is my distance, if the speed, the rate is six miles an hour, how long will it take me then? So again, we have that same setup. My distance is constant. Now, if I live 22 miles away, I'm not picking my house up and moving. But my rate is changing. I am going faster now. One mile per hour faster. So if we plug in six miles per hour for R, what does it simplify to? We get a repeating decimal, 6.3 hours. It's a long time to unicycle to work. No thanks. <laughs> 